Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidil mursalin. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Amma ba'd. Allahümme Rabbena leke elhamdü ve şükrü kema yenbegi li celali vecihika ve azim sultanik. Allahümme inna na'udhu bika minke la nuhsi thana'an aleyke ente kema athnite ala nefsik. Allahümme gfir lana zunubana ve keffer anna seyyiatina ve tevaffana ma'al abrar. Ama ba'd, selamu aleykum ve rahmetullahi ta'ala ve barakatuhu. My respected brothers and sisters, inşaAllah you and your families are well and safe. And inşaAllah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove uh, this pandemic away from all of us as soon as possible. Uh, we are continuing the discussion uh, around dua. And today I want to talk about some of the adab or the etiquettes or the manners of making dua. Dua, as we have established the last few days, is fundamentally important and it's the essence of ibadah. It's the essence of worship. And so it's important that we do do it right. You know, sometimes in, in, in times of calamities and pandemics, uh, uh, people want big things. Uh, however, we forget the most important of things and that is turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of ways is to do so through dua. So of the adab of the dua, uh, first, أَنْ تَدْعُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى بِإِخْلَاصٍ وَإِيمَانٍ وَحُضُورٍ قَلْبٍ When we make dua, we make dua with ikhlas, with sincerity and with iman, with belief that Allah ta'ala is listening and Allah is near and with an attentive heart uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts that which is sincerely for his sake. In Surah Al-Ankabut, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a description of people who when they are in the ocean, in a ship, and when the ship is about to sink, they turn to Allah with sincere dua. فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ so when they are in trouble, they turn to Allah with sincere heart and with full attention, asking Allah for dua. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ But when Allah Ta'ala saves them from difficulties, they associate others with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They turn away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the first thing when we are making dua, it has to have ikhlas, it has to be sincere for Allah, and the heart has to be attentive. Secondly, that we raise our hands like a beggar raises his hand or her hands when they are in need of something. We raise our hands, we raise the palm of our hands towards the heavens. And thirdly, we begin the dua bihamdillah, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa thana alayhi. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah alladhi hadana, alhamdulillah, Allahumma lak alhamdu wa shukur asking Allah, beginning the dua by praising Allah, by calling upon Allah with his beautiful names and his attributes, his asma and his sifat, and not to call uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the names of anybody else but him. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names. Then we give salah on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We begin the dua with salah on the Prophet وسلم, and we end it with salah on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thirdly, أَن تَدْعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَنْتَ مُوْقِنْ بِالْإِجَابَةِ That when we make dua, we make dua with firm conviction that Allah Ta'ala is listening and Allah will respond. As I said yesterday, when He responds, how He responds is up to Him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. After all, He is the Master. And we are the slaves. He is the master and he's the servant. And the servant that does not dictate to the master. Allah is the master, tabaraka wa ta'ala. But he wants us to make dua with certainty that he will respond. And that is why we have been uh, prohibited. Uh, in our dua, we should not say, Allahumma ghfilli in shit. Oh Allah, forgive me if you want. We shouldn't say that. وَلَكِنْ لِيَعْزِمِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ But when we make dua, ask with conviction. Ask with certainty. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا مُكْرِهَ لَهُ Why? Because nobody can force Allah to do what He doesn't want to do. 
So when he wants to do something, he will do it. There is no need to say, Ya Allah, forgive me if you want to forgive me. No, insist on Allah. Ya Allah, forgive me. The other adab, the other important aspect of dua, nahi an yasta'jila wa yatruka du'a listibta'i al-ijaba. It is, we're not allowed to rush and be hasty. In other words, we make du'a, and if it doesn't come tomorrow or the day after or whenever, we lose hope and we stop making du'a. And this is against the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near. Allah qareeb, He is near. He listens to the du'a. But it's up to Him when He responds to the du'a and how He responds to the du'a. Another important adab of du'a, أَن يَكُونَ طَعَامَكَ وَشَرَابَكَ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا is that our food and our drink should be halal and pure. If you want the du'a to be accepted, it's not enough just to raise our hands and to make du'a. We have to make sure that what we eat and what we drink, what we earn is halal. This is based on a hadith in Muslim where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa speaking about a person is a rajulu yutilu safara أشعث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب لذلك. He said a person it's like the example of a person who's you know traveling uh, long distances and becomes tired. أشعث أغبر he's dusty he's disheveled. He or she, they raise their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, they're making du'as, but their food is haram, their drink is haram, their clothing is from haram, they nurtured their flesh from haram. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, how, Allah, how will Allah answer such a du'a? And that's why it's important, my brothers and sisters, to be mindful of what we earn, of what we eat, of what we drink, of what we wear, if we want our dua to, to be accepted. That's why some of the Salaf, some of the righteous people of the, of the past said, لو قمت مقام هذه السارية لم ينفعك شيء حتى تنظر ما يدخل بطنك حلال أو حرام. He said, you can, he said, you can stay in the masjid next to the post and make dua day and night. And that is not going to be any, of any use to you as, lo as long as what you eat and drink is haram. You have to make sure it is halal. The, f the other point about dua is al-ilhahu bid dua is that we insist when we ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Why? Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us yuhibbu al-mulihina fid dua. Unlike humans who don't like to be asked again and again, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala loves to be asked and he loves that we insist when we ask him. وَمَا دَامَ الْعَبْدُ يُلِحُّ فِي الدُّعَاءِ وَيَطْمَعُ فِي الْإِجَابَةِ مِنْ غَيْرِ قِطْعِ الرَّجَاءِ فَهُوَ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْإِجَابَةِ وَمَنْ أَدْمَنَ قَرْعَ الْبَابِ يُوشِكُ أَنْ يُفْتَحَ لَهُ And the ulama says something very beautiful. The scholars, they say that when you become addicted to making dua and addicted to insisting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in making dua and you are hopeful and you are thirsty for that ijabah, that response from Allah ta'ala without losing hope, then know that the response is close. And then they say something very beautiful. وَمَنْ أَدْمَنَ قَرْعَ الْبَابِ Whoever becomes addicted to knocking on the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يُوشِكُ أَنْ يُفْتَحَ لَهُ then he or she should know that sooner or later these doors of Allah on which you are knocking will open insha'Allah ta'ala. Another point about dua, my brothers and sisters, is that Adam al-i'tida'i fi dua qala ta'ala ba'da amrihi fi dua innahu la yuhibbu al-mu'tadeen and that is not to transgress the limits when we are making dua. For example, to ask that Allah Ta'ala help you to do something that is haram. Now that is going transgressing the limits, that you are asking for something in dua that you shouldn't have asked, or to make dua against somebody who doesn't deserve to be made dua against, right? 
So uh, to be mindful when we make dua, we don't transgress the limits. You don't make dua to to break, you know, to break somebody's rizq. You don't make dua to harm somebody. But we make dua to bring people to closer. We make dua to bring people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing about the adab of dua is that we should not ask Allah what Allah will not do. Um, for example, For example, somebody might ask Allah, Ya Allah, make me live forever until the day of judgment. You don't ask that dua because you know Allah Ta'ala is not going to give you that. Because Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala promised that we will all will die. Right? So we have to have this adab with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. The other important adab of dua is that we must not raise and shout when we are making dua. You know, don't scream when you are making dua. Allah is qareeb. Allah hears the dua of people who are making dua softly. Remember when I said the other day, Zakariya alayhi salam, how he made dua khafiya. He made dua a secret dua that nobody could hear. Right? The other adab of dua, my brothers and sisters, is that we must make dua with tadarra. We must make dua with a feeling of need. You know, we shouldn't make dua in such a way that we're not in need of Allah. This is how sometimes we do it. We, tell, we raise our hands and the lips are moving. But the mind is not thinking of Allah. The heart is not thinking of Allah. We're not convinced, right? So it's like somebody who raises his hands or her hands and asks Allah for rizq. But in their heart, they believe actually it's the bank that's giving them the rizq or it's the job that's giving them the rizq. Allah is al razzaq So when we ask Allah for rizq, know that he is al razzaq Know that Allah Ta'ala can take anything away from us anytime. I mean, look what happened with this coronavirus. Who would have imagined? Who would have imagined the whole world to come to a standstill? Who would have imagined that things have completely changed? Places are completely locked overnight. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal يُعِزُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah gives honor to whomsoever He wants and Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala gives disgrace to whomsoever He wants. And that's why to ask Allah with a feeling and a sense of need a feeling and a sense of want, a feeling and a sense of we are poor, we are desperate, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can give tabaraka wa ta'ala. And the, the, when we make dua quietly and when we make dua secretly, there is a lot of sincerity in that. And it's one of the greatest adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Imagine yourself standing in the presence of a king. Would you be shouting and screaming in the presence of the king? No, in front of kings or dignitaries or important people, uh, we lower our voices. And anyone who raises their voice in the presence of important people, they are looked down upon. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَىٰ And to Allah belongs the best of examples. This is Allah, the King of Kings, Malik al-Muluk. We have to ask him with humility. We have to ask him with sincerity. And we have, we have to be very quiet when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him as true beggars, inshaAllah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the tawfiq to make dua in the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tomorrow, inshaAllah ta'ala, I will finish on the question of dua. But just remember... Tomorrow, after I give this a short reminder, uh, Imam Riyadh, the Imam of the Marian Masjid, inshallah ta'ala, will do a live dua, inshallah ta'ala, where you can join in and say Ameen, a dua to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve us from this pandemic and to remove it away from humanity and to bring a cure and a vaccine as soon as possible. So don't forget tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, 6.30. And after my short reminder, Imam Riyadh will be giving the dua. Jazakumullah khair wa barakallah feekum wa ahsana ilaykum.
وتقبل الله منا ومنكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته